we're going to continue on looking at the Ruckus IoT controller. Um, and uh, so in previous episodes, we looked at how to install the IoT controller, how to add your APs into the controller, um, how to add Zigbee devices. And in this case, we're going to talk about how to add BLE devices or more specifically how to support BLE, but they don't actually add as devices. So you'll see that in a second. So let's have a look. Back to our dashboard here. On our dashboard, we have uh, two uh, IoT APs, so so two APs that are uh, pointed back at the IoT controller uh, with um, IoT modules in them. So one of these uh, one of these is online, the other one's unapproved, so it's waiting approval. Um, we're only going to worry about the uh, the online one at the moment. Um, and so it is currently in Zigbee protocol, right? And you can see the channel here that it's running on. So we, in order to support BLE, we need to switch that over, of course, to uh, to BLE protocol. So if we just click anywhere here on the on the um, AP, it brings up this menu. So it's already been approved, yes. Then we're going to change this to BLE and apply that. Okay, so it's uh, it's set its mode to BLE. And then we need to uh, restart the IoT service, right? So it's got to basically restart that IoT module uh, in order to, to uh, broadcast and receive the new protocol. So we will close that out, um, refresh this. So it's going to go offline uh, again to reset that module. And uh, in a few seconds, it'll be back online uh, running BLE. OK. So there it is back online. It's now running a protocol of BLE. Uh, BLE doesn't display a channel like Zigbee does, so it's it's NA here. Um, and so the other thing, uh, what we're not going to see is any devices under um, IoT devices, right? These BLE devices don't actually pair uh, with with the um, the IoT module, right? There, it's just basically receiving that BLE signal and then passing it through across the uh, across the wired network. Um, and so we are not actually going to see anything in here. So how do we know that that's working? Well, um, what we have to do before that is we need to go into admin, and we're going to go to plugins, and we're going to add the plugins. So um, in my case, I'm adding a tile plugin and a tracker plugin, which I've already done. Uh, but I could add, you know, contact IO. Um, I could add whatever whatever I need to do here. So we're not going to change anything. We're just going to activate that. Um, and so so here we see tile and we see tracker in here, um, and that's that's what I have in front of me. So I have two trackers and I have one tile. Um, and so if we want to actually see if anything's happening here. Um, I can click on the tracker, I can go to view logs, and this is going to show me the beacons coming off of my tracker module, right? So um, you will see that there's a couple of different uh, devices here. Um, so the latitude and longitude actually comes from the access point that's receiving it. It doesn't come from the tracker module itself or the tile. It comes from the access point that, that receives that. Um, and then the tracker ID is going to be different um, for, for each tracker. So we can see the trackers in there uh, sending beacons. Um, we'll also see, if I look under the logs of my tile, I'll also see uh, my tile um, ID and the latitude and longitude coming off of my tile. The other way to see any logs happening ra rather than going into the plugins is to actually look at uh, to to if you SSH into the uh, vRiot server or the IoT controller you'll get a menu like this when you log in and what we're looking for is this COM debugger here which is number eight. So if we run COM debugger it's going to ask you for a gateway MAC. So this is looking for the MAC address of your AP so we'll just we'll just show all we only have one uh, and we can just hit enter on exclude topic and then uh, if we wait a second we should start seeing our uh, our beacons come in right so this is this is a bit hard to read but you will see you know tracker so beacon information here you're going to see latitude and longitude you're going to see all the same stuff um, just for everything right so if you have a lot of beacons or a lot of devices there's going to be a lot of information in here um, but this will give you all the information so this is a tile here um, 
but you'll see you'll see the uh, the tracker modules and the tile all show up here under the same screen. So the the tile modules tend to broadcast much more often than the uh, trackers. Trackers are somewhere around 30 seconds, and the tiles seem to be every uh, every couple of seconds. So, but anyway, if you want to see the information, that's how you would do it uh, for all of your devices at once, rather than on a per plugin basis. Okay, and so uh, so pretty straightforward. So so again. Nothing shows up here, even though I'm receiving those beacons and forwarding them on. And in order to test this, what I can do is I've already paired those trackers and the and the tile with my uh, phone, and so I can turn off Bluetooth on my phone, and 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 use Crowd Crowd Find or or um, uh, the Crowd Find will will basically the the IoT module will forward on to the centralized servers of tracker to tell it that we found your device somewhere else and you can go in and change the um, change the latitude and longitude of your uh, access point and see if it shows up somewhere else right so there's a few things you can do to make to uh, to see it happen at this point